Are you feeling lost about your YouTube content? Are your video topics all over the place? Are you struggling to retain viewers and gain subscribers? Do you know your why for why you're making videos? If this sounds like you, you need to find your niche. My promise to you is that by the time you finish watching this video, you will have greater clarity on who your audience is and how you can deliver the content that they really want to watch. Why is finding your niche important? Your niche is like your North Star. It's your guiding light. It is the who, the what, and the why of your content. Who is your content for? What are you making that's going to help them? Why are you making it? Finding the answers to these questions is the first step to massively increase your views per video and blow up your subscriber count. In this video, we are going to use a three-step framework to help you find your niche. We'll be digging in and answering three big questions. Question one, who am I? Question two, who are they? And question three, how can I add value? And make sure to watch until the end for an extra pro tip on picking your niche to maximize your overall reach and explode your channel's ability to make money. And if we haven't met before, my name is Woody and this is Grown Up Pains, where we talk about all things business and personal growth. In this series, we'll be going over how to start a YouTube channel, how to monetize it as a side hustle, and everything that you need to know to get your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. If that sounds like something you're into, please consider just hovering around the subscribe button and then letting your finger fall and tap it. Now, before we dive in, please consider grabbing a pen and some paper or a journal and writing three columns. Column one is who am I? Column two is who are they? And column three is value. So let's start by answering the question, who am I? And what I mean is, who are you? What are your skills and experiences? What are you good at? Are you good at writing? Are you good at teaching? Are you good at graphic design? Maybe you're really good at a subject from school like calculus or algebra. Maybe you're really knowledgeable about history. Maybe you have a physical skill set, like you're really good at fixing things around the house, or you're really good at building things out of wood, carpentry. Um, maybe you're good at welding. Maybe you're good at repairing electronics. Maybe you're good at troubleshooting software on a PC or troubleshooting software on a Mac. Maybe you're good at tweaking the settings on your phone to make it do exactly what you want, you know, customization settings. Start brainstorming some of these things and jot them down in the who am I column. As you list out the things that you're good at, ask yourself one question. Have I ever taught this or explained it to somebody else? And if not, could I? Also, don't leave out your professional experience. What kind of jobs have you had? Pulling up your oldest resume actually might remind you about a job that you used to have that you really loved, and there might be something about that that you could teach someone who's considering getting into it. So we're still in the first column, but ask yourself, what kinds of jobs have I held? What kind of skills did I need for those jobs? Some examples of skills you might need or have learned in a job would be sales, web design, Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoints, team leadership, any skills you can think of that you've ever had in a job, just jot them down. We're going to circle back to it later on. And we're still in the first column, but now we're going to talk about interests and passions. What are some things that you are genuinely enthusiastic about? What are some topics that you naturally gravitate towards? If you find yourself to be a bit of a health nut, maybe you are passionately interested in fitness or in nutrition or dieting. Maybe you're really into music. Maybe you're a musician and, and you play music or you listen to music or you analyze music. Maybe you're super into sports like football, basketball, soccer, baseball. Maybe you're really into travel and you want to see the world. Maybe you have seen a whole bunch of the world. And if you're struggling to think of interests or passions, maybe jot down this question uh, as a journaling prompt and give yourself some time to think about it. If you had a hundred million dollars in the bank and you never had to work again, what would you do? Now don't go too far because we're still in the first column. We're trying to figure out who am I? We're going to talk about values and beliefs. What values are most important to you? What values do you hold? What beliefs do you hold? And think about what kind of message you want to convey with your content and what kind of impact do you want to have with your message? So now hopefully you have a completely filled out column one with at least 10 things listed out, if not 20, 30, 40, 50. You should have way more than you think is necessary because we're going to narrow this down, but this is just a starting point. So column one is filled out and now we're gonna move on to column two. And column two is who are they? Let's figure out who your audience is. 
We do want to consider the demographics of your audience, but sometimes thinking about demographics is a little bit meta. I mean, we're, we're considering the age, we're considering the location, like where are they, uh, whether that's physically or like in what groups on the internet, like where do they hang out online? And then what are their interests? If you're struggling to piece these things together, consider visualizing a specific person. It could even be a real person. It could be a friend of yours. It could be a family member of yours. If there's anyone in your life that's ever coming up to you and asking you for help with something, that's a, probably a pretty good indication of what you are good at and a problem that you continually solve for somebody. So something that you can talk about um, a little bit more, but also like that could be your target avatar. If your friend is always asking you for help with uh, a work problem or with their homework, or they're always asking you to uh, look over something that they've written before they send it out, then that's indicative of a skill set that you have and something that is a need. <laughs> You're familiar with fulfilling that need. So once you've considered your demographic or narrowed this down to a specific person, a specific target avatar, the next thing we want to do is consider what are their pain points or their challenges? What are things that these people struggle with? What are things that this person struggles with? What are things that they complain about? And keeping your audience or your avatar in mind, ask yourself, what are their online habits and their preferred content formats? Do they like tutorials? Do they like vlogs? Do they watch or listen to interviews? And a very important step here is to do a little bit of research and analysis. And to that, we are just gonna go straight to YouTube. Go to that search bar and type in your niche or type in something that someone in your niche might search for. How to fix this problem. How to make this thing. How to learn this skill. See what videos are popping up and see you know which videos are in the top five and the top 10, like which are really ranking on YouTube. Look at the titles of those videos. Look at the thumbnails of those videos. Watch a few of those videos and click through to the channel. Don't just watch the video, but go to the channel and look at are, are these the top channels in this niche? You could make a little Excel spreadsheet or uh, for totally for free use Google Sheets, um, but list out the name of the channel and then how many videos they have, how many they have on the topic you want to talk about. And where exactly do they fall in comparison to other channels that talk about similar topics? So look at some of these popular channels for inspiration and try to identify their niche. And what we're trying to do is look for a gap in the market where you could potentially add value. Also consider using some free audience research tools. I know there are a few out there like uh, vidIQ, and I'm not a sponsor, but that's one that has some, some good free tools. Uh, and then of course they have paid versions as well. Also check out some free audience research tools. We'll link a few in the description below. I am gonna circle back to this topic at the end of the video though. So do we feel like we've sufficiently identified who are they, who is your audience, who is your avatar? Let me know in the comments below and tell me if what we've talked about so far has helped you kind of narrow things down and identify it, or if you still don't have total clarity, I wanna know that too. If you have some ideas, list them out. You know, what are you thinking about making a channel about? Let me know. I do my best to respond to every comment and I am genuinely interested in what you have going on and what you're trying to pursue. So we've talked about who am I, we've talked about who are they, and now we're gonna talk about how can we add value. We'll still be brainstorming in this column, but we will talk about a few uh, concepts that I want you to kind of circle back to uh, and ruminate on a little bit more. The first one is called a USP or a unique selling proposition. This is kind of a businessy term, but you know, you might be thinking of YouTube as a hobby. You might be thinking of it as a business. If you're going to try to monetize it, you definitely want to start considering it as a business. So what is a unique selling proposition? This is the thing that only you can offer. And I know when I said that, you just got really scared because you're like, uh, I don't know what only I can offer. Everyone out there is doing it already. Don't worry about that. Everyone's doing it, but they're doing it their way. You have a unique set of knowledge and experiences that is unlike anybody else in the world. The way that you decide to talk about something, and you may not have even figured this out yet. You may not even know until you're in the moment doing it. I'm in the moment filming this video and I made a little script over here with some bullet points, but. I'm saying things that I didn't exactly think about in advance. In fact, this whole thing that I'm saying right now is completely off the cuff. Hopefully nobody has said these exact words before in this exact way, but my unique selling proposition is to deliver the information that I wanna share with you 
in a way that I hope is going to help you the most. But sometimes your unique selling proposition is just the way that you deliver the content. So you don't have to think, I have to have this big idea that nobody in the world has ever in their life had before. A lot of people still have probably executed on some of those ideas, but they've only done it in the way that they knew how. Now you're gonna do it in the way that you know how. And you have this unique combination of information and experiences that you get to put together and distill in a way that is easy to explain for your audience. So to help narrow down our USP, we want to combine our skills with our interests and our target audience needs. Maybe a Venn diagram is the best way to do this, but you know, where do all of these things intersect? After you've done some research from the previous stage, ask yourself, what approach can you take that will be at least a little bit different from some of the other people in that niche on YouTube already? And what specific value will you provide to your viewers? Value is a tricky word. People throw it around and it's often ill-defined. I think it's Alex Ramosi actually in this book has a great equation for value. It's kind of like the whole point of the book. Uh, highly recommend it. I've read it once. I'm going to go back and read it again and I will be doing some videos on uh, some of the business topics that he covers in here, but they can be applied in so many areas outside of just business. I mean, if you are, if you're just an employee for another company, but you act in any kind of sales capacity or you have to work with other people, that sounds like most jobs, right? You got to work with other people. Then knowing how you can add value by what you're doing, it, it helps everything. I mean, it doesn't just increase your revenue, but it makes things easier at work when you're able to provide some value. So uh, I'm actually going to find the value equation in here really quick and read it to you. So he basically has this as a fraction in the book. Um, on the upper part of the fraction, it is the dream outcome times the perceived likelihood of achievement. And then down below is time delay times effort and sacrifice. Uh, and that equals value. I'm gonna show that to you really quick. So let's talk about that for a second. The dream outcome, like what is the pain point of the person that you're trying to help? What is the single best thing that could happen to them that would that would make their lives better, that makes their problem go away, right? So what is the dream outcome for the person that you're trying to help? What is the thing they want to achieve or the problem that they want to solve? And then he has that multiplied by the perceived likelihood of achievement. This is the perception of your target audience, right? The perception of the person that you're helping, but what do they believe is the likelihood that they will actually get their dream outcome? So those things on top, you want to increase those as much as possible, right? Now on the bottom of the equation is time delay and then effort and sacrifice. So time delay is like, how long will it take for me to get this dream outcome? Uh, is it instant or does it take, you know, months and months of hard work? And then effort and sacrifice. So effort is defined as like, what are things that I'll have to do that I'm not doing already, right? So things I have to add to what I'm doing and then sacrifice are what things do I want that I have to give up in order to get this. You want to reduce time delay because the shorter it takes for someone to get a result, the more attention they're going to give to it and the more they would actually pay for the thing. And you want to reduce effort and sacrifice because nobody wants to put in a ton of effort and nobody wants to give up a lot of things that they have going on in their life already, right? That they want, um, but you wanna increase the things up top. You wanna to increase the dream outcome. Like sometimes you have to paint a picture for them of what that dream outcome could be. And if that's in alignment with what they actually want, then they will accept the picture that you've painted. And the perceived likelihood of achievement, like do they believe that you can actually deliver on what you say you will help them with? So that's the value equation as defined by Alex Ramosi in his book, $100 Million Offers. I will link that down in the description below and we are an Amazon affiliate. So if you click that link and choose to buy, we do earn a small commission, maybe enough to buy a coffee. I don't know. Now that is a very mathematical and analytical way to think about value. A much more simplistic way is essentially, you know, what, what is a problem that someone has or what is something that they want that they don't have already? And maybe that's the problem, right? And can you solve it for that person? Can you solve that problem? And to what degree can you solve that problem? How quickly can you solve that problem with as little effort and sacrifice? So we're getting back into the equation, but basically target the people you want to help. What's the problem they have and can you solve it? And it might just be, they don't know about a thing. They're Googling how to do it and they find your video and your video explains how to do it. So your video adds value. You want to add as much value as possible up front. Give them everything they need and try to do that before you ask for anything in return. But of course, you might have a call to action like, 
liking the video, clicking subscribe, leaving a comment. By the way, if you feel like doing any of those things right now for this video, I would so appreciate it. But you don't have to, it's up to you. And I did promise you a pro tip on picking a niche that will maximize your overall reach and explode your channel's ability to make money. And because you stayed to the end, you get that now. And that tip is finding the sweet spot with your total addressable market. It's another business term, sorry, but total addressable market is like, what are the, what are the maximum number of people that are searching for your niche or searching for topics within your niche? When you're picking your niche, it's possible to go for something very broad where you're trying to kind of reach everybody. And it's also possible to get hyper specific where you're trying to focus on just like a very narrow segment. And there's a lot of debate over which of these is better. I think that the best way to do this is to find the sweet spot. And one strategy is to go very broad with your overall channel niche and very specific and targeted with your video topics, with the niche of your specific videos from one video to the next, hyper specific. One thing that I've learned from watching channels like Think Media and Ali Abdal is to answer specific questions, but each video can be an answer to one of those questions. Also consider using some research tools like Google Trends to find out exactly how many people are searching for things and use search engines to see what people are searching for. The autocomplete feature in Google, the autocomplete feature in YouTube, and the autocomplete feature in Amazon, when you start to type something in, is it provides a wealth of information. So I would start by using those autocomplete features as a starting point and then pick five, 10, 15 things from autocomplete, identify a few things within your niche that you might be interested in actually making a video about, and then go over to Google Trends and type those in and see how many people are searching for that on a regular basis? You know, how many people are searching for it this month, in the last year, in the last three years, in the last five years? And this will give you some insights into A, is the topic that you're thinking about trending right now? And B, is it something that is evergreen content? Meaning, is it something that's been relevant for years and will continue to be relevant for years? Now, the research part of this can actually get pretty deep, especially when you're considering your long-term YouTube strategy. But if you are just starting out, I don't want you to overthink this. You know, do some research, take notes, let some of these things simmer and ruminate for a while. And, and eventually, I know you will grasp an idea of what you want to make content about and how that content might be able to answer a question for somebody, solve a problem for somebody, or, or serve that person in some other way. The best part is you don't have to stay with a niche forever. And if you're just getting started on YouTube, it is very easy to pivot. So just try something out for maybe one, two, three, maybe even five videos, maybe even 10 videos, and get some practice under your belt for making these videos. But at the same time, know that you can always change course a little bit later. One of my favorite quotes that I've heard in the last year is that you can't steer a ship that isn't moving. So my best advice to you is to do some of this research, take what you've learned in this video, identify something that you might wanna start talking about, just start making a few videos, see how they perform, but also know that you can change at any point in time if you need to. Now, if you got value out of this video, please consider hitting the like button, leaving a comment and telling me what you learned. And if you have never uploaded a video before and you're just thinking about getting started, then this is the video that you need to watch right now. Thanks.